Oops, I'm blocking my cat. Hey. I don't know why. Nobody said I couldn't have my cat in my video. I'm just gonna... Hi. It is your best friend and... Can I have my hand back? No, I'm not gonna start that way. I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna get closer to my cat. Look at this. Look at this. You stop that. Hello, my name is Miss Christina and I am a teen librarian at the Newport Public Library in Newport, Rhode Island. Look, that's my cat. And welcome to another episode of First Chapter Fridays. I want to do all my videos with my cat. So today we are reading the book Moxie by Jennifer Matthew. Moxie's the story of a young woman who starts an underground newsletter to fight back at the sexist dress code at her school. And what she thinks is just a way to burn off her frustration turns out to really change things around her. So grab some coffee, tea, juice, and maybe a little catnip for your friend. And let's listen to the first chapter of Moxie. Thank you for staying here. My English teacher, Mr. Davies, rubs a hand over his military buzz cut. There's sweat beating at his hairline and he puffs out his ruddy cheeks. He looks like a drunk porcupine. The drunk part may be true, even if it is before lunch on a Tuesday. Let's discuss the symbolism in line 12 of the poem, he announces. And I pick up my pen so I can copy down exactly what he says when he tells us what the gold light behind the blue curtains really means. Mr. Davies says he wants us to discuss the symbolism, but that's not true. When we have our unit test, he'll expect us to write down what he told us in class, word for word. I blink and try to stay awake. Half of the kids are messing with their phones, grinning faintly into their groins. I can sense my brain liquefying. Vivian, what are your thoughts? Mr. Davy asks me, of course. Well, I say, folding in on myself and staring at the Xerox copy of the poem on my desk. Um, my cheeks turn scarlet. Why does Mr. Davies have to call on me? Why not mess with one of the groin grinners? At least I'm pretending to pay attention. Neither of us says anything for what feels like a third of my lifespan. I shift in my seat. Mr. Davy stares. I chew my bottom lip uncertainly. Mr. Davy stares. I search my brain for an answer, any answer, but with everyone's eyes on me, I can't think straight. Finally, finally, Mr. Davies gives up. Lucy, he says, calling on the new girl, Lucy Hernandez, who's had her hand up since he asked the question. He stares at her blankly and waits. Um, well, Lucy starts, and you can tell she's excited to get going, even sitting up a little straighter in her chair. If you think about the reference the speaker makes in line eight, what I'm wondering is if the light doesn't indicate a, um, Oh, what do you call it? Like a, like a shift in the speaker's understanding. There's a cough that interrupts her from the back of the room and at the tail end of the cough slips out the words, <laughs> make me a sandwich. And then there's a collection of snickers and laughs, like a smattering of applause. I don't have to turn around to know that it's Mitchell Wilson being an a-hole cheered on by his douchebag football friends. Lucy takes in a sharp breath. Wait, what did you say? She asks, turning in her seat, her dark eyes wide with surprise. Mitchell just smirks at her from his desk, his blue eyes peering out from under his auburn hair. He would actually be kind of cute if he never spoke. 
or walked around or breathed or anything. I said, Mitchell begins, enjoying himself. Make me a sandwich. His fellow football player minions laugh like it's the freshest, most original bit of comedy ever, even though all of them have been using this line since last spring. Lucy turns back in her seat, rolling her eyes. Little hives are burning up her chest. That's not funny, she manages softly. She slips her long black hair over her shoulder like she's trying to hide. Standing at the front of the room, Mr. Davy shakes his head and frowns. If we can't have a reasonable discussion in the classroom, then I'm going to have to end the lesson right now, he tells us. I want all of you to take out your grammar textbooks and start the exercises on page 25 and 26. They're due tomorrow. I swear he picks those pages blindly. Who knows if he's even gone over the material. As my classmates offer up a collective groan and I fish around in my backpack for a book, Lucy regains some sort of courage and pipes up, Mr. Davies, that's not fair. We were having a reasonable discussion, but they, and she nods her head over her shoulder, unable to look in Mitchell's direction again. They are the ones who ruined it. I don't understand why you're punishing all of us. Oh, I cringe. Lucy is new to East Rockport High. She doesn't know what's coming. Lucy? Did I or did I not just announce to the class that it should begin the grammar exercises on page 25 and 26 of the grammar textbook? Mr. Davy spits more enthusiastically about disciplining Lucy than he ever seemed to be about the gold light behind the blue curtains. Yes, but... No, stop. Mr. Davy interrupts. Stop talking. You can now add page 27 to your assignment. Mitchell and his friends collapse into laughter. And Lucy sits there, stunned, her eyes widening as she stares at Mr. Davies like no teacher has ever talked to her like that in her life. A beat or two later, Mitchell and his friends get bored and settle down. And all of us are opening our textbooks, surrendering ourselves to the assignment. My head is turned towards the words subordinate clause but my gaze makes its way toward Lucy. I wince a little as I watch her staring at her still closed textbook like somebody smacked her across the face with it and she's still getting her breath back. It's obvious, she's trying not to cry. When the bell finally rings, I grab my stuff and head out as fast as I can. Lucy is still in her seat, her head down as she slides her stuff into her backpack. I spot Claudia making her way down the hall toward me. Hey, I say, pulling my backpack over my shoulder. Hey, she answers, shooting me the same grin she's had since we became best friends in kindergarten, bonding over our shared love of stickers and chocolate ice cream. What's happening? I sneak a look to make sure Mitchell or one of his friends isn't near me to overhear. We just got all this grammar homework. Mitchell was bugging the new girl, Lucy, and instead of dealing with him, Mr. Davies just assigned the entire class all these extra pages of homework. Let me guess, Claudia says as we head down the hall. Make me a sandwich. Oh my God, how did you ever figure that one out? I answer, my voice thick with mock surprise. Just a wild guess says Claudia with the roll of her eyes. She's tinier than me. The top of her head only reaching my shoulder and I have to lean in to hear her. At five foot 10 inches and a junior in high school, I'm afraid I might still be growing, but Claudia, she's been the size of a coffee table tchotchke since sixth grade. It's such BS, I mutter as we stop at my locker and it's not even original humor. Make me a sandwich? I mean, dude, you could at least come up with something that hasn't been all over the internet since we were in middle school. 
I know, Claudia agrees, waiting as I find my sack in the cavernous recesses of my messy locker. But cheer up, I'm sure he'll grow out of it sooner or later. I give Claudia a look and she smirks back. Way back when, Mitchell was just another kid in our class at East Rockport Middle School. And his dad was just an annoying seventh grade Texas history teacher who liked to waste time in class by showing us infamous football injuries on YouTube, complete with bone breaking through skin. Mitchell was like a mosquito back then. Irritating, but easy to forget if you just ignored him. Fast forward five years later and Mr. Wilson managed to climb the Byzantine ranks of the East Rockport public school hierarchy to become principal of East Rockport High School and Mitchell gained 30 pounds and the town discovered he could throw a perfect spiral and now it is totally acceptable that Mitchell Wilson and his friends interrupt girls in class to instruct them to make sandwiches. Once in the cafeteria, Claudia and I navigate our way to the tables to sit with the girls we eat lunch with every day. Caitlin Price and Sarah Gomez and Meg McCrone. Like us, they're sweet, mostly normal girls and we've known each other since forever. They're the girls who never lived anywhere but East Rockport. Population, 6,000. Girls who try not to stand out. Girls who have secret crushes that they'll never act on. Girls who sit quietly in class and earn decent grades and hope they won't be called on to explain the symbolism in line 12 of a poem. So, like, nice girls. We sit there talking about classes and random gossip, and I take a bite of my apple. I see Lucy Hernandez at a table with a few of the other lone wolves who regularly join forces in an effort to appear less lonely. Her table is surrounded by the jock table and the popular table and the stoner table and every other variety of East Rockport kid table. Lucy's table is the most depressing. She's not talking to anyone, just jamming a plastic fork into some supremely sad looking pasta dish sitting inside of a beat up Tupperware container. I think about going over to invite her to sit with us, but then I think about the fact that Mitchell and his dumbass friends are sitting smack in the center of the cafeteria, booting it up, looking for any chance to help one of us with more of their lady-hating garbage. And Lucy Hernandez has become a prime target given what just happened in class, so I don't invite her to sit with us. Maybe I'm not so nice after all.